How's it going guys? It's Ricky with Tech with Solutions. So thank you guys again for joining us for another helpful video. Today was pretty hectic. It was my last day, um, my last full day, right, um, here in California. Um, I catch a flight tomorrow right now. It's 11, uh, 11 p.m. Um, Pacific Standard Time, Southern California, I believe. Um, and I catch a flight. Um, it's, I have to be at the airport at 5.30 a.m. Um, and then my day is going to get started from there. But I pretty much wanted to make at least a video that um, was at least not highly requested, uh, but was at least, um, in a sense, talked good about. And that was actually uh, when I did um, I did a video on how to trade penny stocks, all I did was talk about you know the importance of planning. And I actually just started sharing my screen. So um, something that we talked about in TechBot Solutions is how important it is to to plan out you know your trades for the following day so as of today you know today being wednesday planning out for thursday um not just planning out pre-market hours but to have an understanding of what it is that you're going to be you know investing in um, i'm going to perform a technical analysis on just five simple stocks the five the top five stocks that i see potential in um, and i'm going to use three different things i'm going to use my td ameritrade thinkorswim platform uh to perform those technical analysis i'm going to use my prime berry pick checklist to write them all down so I can have a plan for them um, and not just have them in my head, right? And then I'm gonna use the TechBot Solutions um, technical analysis group chat and then post it there so others can see. Um, with those three simple tools or resources, um, I make it a lot easier for me not only, you know, uh, to remember what it is that I'm going to be trading, but as well um, do my part for the part of TechBot Solutions um, and share my best practices that I can with the group so they can see what it is and be exposed to you know that new opportunity and them as the investor to identify the potential themselves if they see it, right? Um, and it really comes down to something that simple. Um, that's So I'm, I'm getting asked a couple questions. If you guys can just wait... Um, for the last you know two minutes of the video i'll go ahead and start answering some of your questions uh, but i'm going to start sharing my screen and, and explain to you exactly what it is that i, I have access to um, and how you guys can gain access to it as well again if you guys aren't a part of TechBit solutions already the link is provided for you down below we're sitting a little bit over fifteen thousand members now worldwide and the thing that we do best is we provide a supportive community um, in sharing best practices and sharing mistakes and effort to promote growth um, I can't thank you guys again enough for the support. We're a little bit um, over 13,200 members now worldwide. Uh, not not worldwide, I'm sorry. Uh, subscribers um, within our YouTube channel. So I appreciate um, that. So I'm going to start sharing my screen. Um, and let me go ahead and just start with this. So this is my PBP um, checklist. So I know that Barry isn't spelled right. And the reason I called it Barry, if you guys are going to try to correct me, um, was because a member within our group actually came out with this idea. Um, of creating this checklist and his name was Barry so I wanted to come up with this checklist uh, and give him credit for it um, and that's really just it just just trying to give him credit for what it is that he came up with um, and I named it after him so prime berry check prime berry picks uh, means that you know if you're shopping um, or picking berries um, for your family or for yourself you want to make sure that they're ripe right that you want to make sure that they're um, at, at, a, at a good point so you can eat them and they taste good. So just like these stocks, you want to make sure that you invest them when they're good, when they're in your favor. So I came up with criteria that they each have to meet before I put them as, you know, in my basket for prime berry, you know, my prime berry picks. Um, and that's really just it. This, you guys can gain access to it. If you go within the TechBook Solutions um, Facebook platform, you just put the PVP, you search for it, and then it pops up right here and you can just simply just download it and then you'll have access to that sheet as well. Um, and then now the, the group chat, you guys can gain access to the TechBook Solutions technical analysis feed, which is something that I try to post in uh, on the daily Monday through Friday. Uh, simply on the top pinned post, if you click see more, um, all these group chats uh, links are provided for you right here. Uh, the technical analysis group chat link um, is provided for you right here. Um, and I believe it's still open. So you guys can feel free to join it for free. And again, all this is all provided for you for free. So let me go ahead and open the Thinkorswim platform. And let's go ahead and get right into it. So this is just the way that I perform my technical analysis. And in no way does that mean that you guys have to do the same thing. Um, this is just, again, me sharing my best practices, um, an effort for you guys to learn from it. Um, and if not, just to tweak it according to, you know, what can best fit your needs. So um, JDST was one that I was trading today. Um, I saw that it had a resistance right around, you know, 88 to $89, right? 
um, had a support originally at $85.30. It touched that support twice, right, with hitting that resistance one. So that was a perfect trade um, and almost hit that resistance, you know, a third time. Um, but what we started to see towards the end of the day is that it started to not go as low. You know, these it used to hit the resistance right at 80 pretty much, eight, let's just call it $89. Um, and once it would hit that resistance, it came all the way back down to the old support of 85.26. That means that this support is still valid. Now when it bounced the second time from 85.30, it hit nearly $89. But then when it, you know, bounced, it actually didn't hit, you know, where it did before. It started, you know, bouncing a little bit higher than it did before. This is showing signs of upward momentum. Um, and during pre-market hours, and now even held above $87. Um, so the 87.80, right? And that's good. Um, I mean, it nearly held over, um, it closed at 88.10, um, 88 which is showing signs of upward momentum. Hopefully in the morning we can break the resistance at around $89. So what could be a good, you know, this can be something that I want to follow up with uh, because then this can be, in a sense, a gapper. Um, and I'm going to talk to you guys about that real quick. Um, the reason I call this a gapper is because if we go a little bit further back, um, simply five days. So there are some bad news that came out um, and that caused, you know, just the consistent downward trend, especially from its peak at $100. Now it's around $88. So it has about a, you know, $12 gap to fill with an $88 stock, that's more than your 10% potential, right? In the sense for this $1,000 challenge that we're doing within our tech but solutions group chat, you really just need to lock in 2.33% growth. Um, I mean, with that, it's a matter of, you know, $2 growth um, that you would really need to see within, um, you know, JDST for it to even hit, you know, that 2%, um, that 2 potential, or that 2% profit. Uh, so this is definitely one that I'm going to want to follow up with because I think it's at its low point, and hopefully tomorrow we can see the break at, at its resistance at $89 and catch it while it gaps, hopefully to $95 um, to, you know, $97 because that's kind of the margin that it has after it, you know, after market hours, it had this drop from about $95 all the way down to where it opened, right? So hopefully during pre-market hours or as the market opens, we can see a gap, you know, on the way up, right? So hopefully this this builds a little V uh, or a little U, um, and that's pretty much just my whole plan. Now let's go ahead and um, I'm per, uh, pretty much um, using volume to be, you know, my my indicator from top to bottom, just because I like seeing a good amount of volume because I want to make sure that I can get in and out, um, especially within the first, you know. Um, 15 to 30 minutes of the market open. So I'm going to go ahead and put FTR to see how that looks. Well, FTR, uh, wow, okay, 132 is where it closed at. During pre-market hours, it held above the 130 support. So this is good. It hit lows of 129. This is one that I messed up on today. Um, I talked about, you know, um, my mistake of holding overnight. If you guys haven't done so already, feel free to look at that recap. Um, and I'm pretty open about what it is that I made a mistake on. And that's the whole point of this group, right? Again, sharing best practices and sharing mistakes and effort to promote growth. So now it's built its support at around $30. I mean, $1.30. It's built its resistance based on what I saw today. It wasn't able to break above 137. So now there's this margin of profit from 130 to 137. Again, that isn't your 10%, but that is at least, you know, your 2.33% your profit that you need to see. So if the market holds, you know, based on how FTR has been playing out, obviously, you know, because it's still in the dollar range, this is not a stock that you want to hold based on it being on a downward trend. But it, if it shows to be valid while the market opens, that it still holds above um, $1.30 and it starts to show signs of upward momentum, the RSI indicators are in your favor as they were right here, right, going below the 30 RSI. Um, then those are indicators that you guys can use based on my criteria. Uh, these, these are indicators that I would use uh, based on my criteria that you know FTR would be a good buy. So FTR can definitely be one that I'm going to be following up with, um, and I'm going to put that at 130 um, and then 137 resistance. This is just my plan. Uh, JDST currently has a uh, support at 87 and then resistance at about 89. This is just one that I'm going to have to follow up with. Let me go ahead and continue going down the list. So now FTR. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to set my alerts. And I'm going to set my alert when it goes below 130. And when it goes 
above 137. I kind of just want to be up today. And then overall, the support is 129. So I want to make sure that I know when it breaks, you know, if it breaks below that. Just, just wanting to stay up to date. Let's go ahead and change that A and B. And again, this is pretty much just this. What, what I'm trying to uh, make sure that you guys focus on is the importance of planning. So this following morning, you guys aren't just going based off someone else's opinion. This is what I want you guys to focus on with AMD. It had this solid drop, right? Uh, it held, you know, this was after market hours, this gray area. It had this solid drop pretty much to its old support, right? Um, but it held. It, usually when you see a solid drop like this, then you see it starts slowly starts uh, downward a downward staircase, but it started to hold now it has a resistance Right there um, So what I'm gonna want to know is once it breaks it overall its highest point was 1085 So I'm gonna create my alert uh, when this one goes above 1086 and then if it breaks below that support during pre-market But this RSI indicator is not in my favor. Um, I mean, the SMA is kind of flatlining at this resistance. So this can be a breaker, I mean, a gapper, right? So if it breaks above 1085, you can see a good increase in volume. Um, and it definitely has a good margin of profit to make up. So AMD was one that we were following up with. Um, and it's one that Jeremy, my buddy, and you know, a series of members within our group of TechBot Solutions uh, that were trading this one. Um, so this is definitely one that you know can have a, a really nice, you know, spike in volume and can probably gap its way back up but realistically is that going to happen well you know it all comes down to your planning so what i'm going to do is i have my alert set um this is definitely one that i want to keep in my radar especially for the next days as you can obviously see you know based on these past you know five days this i'm um, sorry 10 days this u that it's building right and and it's simply if we can get in it right now now that it's showing that you know uh, $10 was pretty much its support and now that it's showing signs of upward momentum What I'm thinking is once it breaks $11 people are going to see wow now instead of it You know seeing this downward trend it's built its support is now going to show true signs of upward momentum So this could be potentially one that I'd be interested in swing trading. Uh, so let me go ahead and put AMD uh, support currently is around $10 and um, what was it? Too far away Ten seventy, then eleven dollars. All right, next one. I'm going based off volume again. Um, VRX. This is probably not going to be one that I'm going to want to look at. Um, RSI. Some signs of upward momentum. I'm going to go a little bit further back. See, uh, just too high for me. I'm going to set my alerts, but this is not one that I think I'm going to, um, you know really want to trade just based on how high it is if anything it's most likely going to see a downward trend um and based on what i can see you know these gaps that it's been having in a day from you know from its open of well it's been having pretty solid gaps really from here from ten dollars to highs of twelve dollars and fifty cents it's twenty percent and today it's off five percent with the open and it's peak at it's all about Nah, yeah, like five percent. So that's not bad. So I have my um, when it goes above and below, and I just have my alert set for that. So it's not that one necessarily that I want to trade tomorrow, but it's just one that I want to keep, you know, at least myself up to date. NAK was a big mover today, so I want to make sure I stay up to date with that one. I have <clears throat> I have my alert set. It built a resistance around two eleven, so I'm going to create an alert when it goes above it. And I already have my alert when it breaks below the support again. So I have my alert set for NAK already, um, and I'll just follow up with this one. Um, MTBC, I think, was one that's going to be a little bit more um, tradable based on it hitting this more um, you know, solid support at $2. And just based on this huge spike that I saw, I'd seen a downward trend. I'm hoping to catch a bounce around $2 um, because it, it had pretty solid bounces from you know lows of 258 highs of 288 you know, those $0.20, cents, $0.30, cents, uh, sense of potential margin for profit. Um, those are definitely ones that I want to follow. Some alerts and when it goes below. And if it can break above 250. 
All right, and then I'm going to write that down to MTBC. Um, and, and really with just this, right? So support. And this whole, you know, like just process that I'm doing right now and writing them down, right? Um, so these are my ones that out of my whole watch list, um, I mean, these are just a selected amount uh, that I think that see or, or have potential based on certain criteria that I have set up. So tomorrow in the morning, if you know they open accordingly on on what I was expecting, then I can actually plan out my trade, um, and I don't have to focus on you know 10, 15, 30 stocks because that's super overwhelming. I don't know anyone that can you know comfortably, especially once starting out, um, can analyze 30 stocks at once. And identify one to pick out, especially if you don't have any scanners or you don't know how to properly use scanners. I personally, more as a technical trader, um, enjoy doing these technical analysis um, and find myself seeing a higher success rate when planning out, when an analyzing the day before, the day of, right during pre-market hours, um, and then planning and, and executing accordingly. So we talk about three things in technical solutions, right? Um, not our rules, but you know things that you should do accordingly. You should learn how to invest. You should learn how to trade. And once you learn how to trade, then you should plan out your trades. Uh, planning out your trades as in where you're buying, where you're selling, and where you're going to cut your losses. Um, and in doing that, you know you, you're only going to be investing in stocks that have a, have a higher potential margin for profit and have a smaller, you know, potential for loss. Um, and that's only you know that only makes sense. Um, and then the third thing is execute. Make sure that you stick according to your plan. If you're saying that I'm going to buy in, you know, once it breaks above two dollars, I'm going to try to sell at two dollars and twenty cents. Stay, stick to that. If it goes above two dollars and twenty cents, who cares? You as an investor have to understand that you need to lock in your profits at what you're saying. And that's why within our prime bear pick checklist in the bottom, it says, you know, um, I promise to honor, you know, my plan. Um, and in doing that, you are signing that you're going to agree and go after, you know, whatever it is that you're planning out and making sure that that's realistic. And most importantly, you always want to make sure you cut your losses, um, especially with this $1,000 challenge. If you can't manage your risk, if you can't manage your loss, you're never going to be able to really manage your growth. And what I mean by that is how are you going to, how do you expect to make money in this market of investing if, you know, you're making, you know, two, three percent profit a day and then you're seeing five to ten percent losses you know once a week uh, you're giving back all your gains and because of that you know if you minimize your losses although you are losing a day trade in the long run right years down the road your overall account is going to see a large larger dollar value increase than you know you trying to you know hope for the best and, and let your emotions come into play i'm telling you you know when you plan out your trades and you become a little bit more systematic um, and treat it more as an actual career and as a job that you know it's it's a fun thing and i don't want to make i, I don't want to minimize that or make that go away but i want to make sure that you guys understand how serious you guys need to treat this because if you don't, then you become 90% of the people that lose money. And that's really what we're trying to break with in Tech Solutions. I want to try to share and promote, you know, the best practices that I've learned uh, that have led me to be, you know, that 10% that, you know, can make money off the market. Uh, not because I do anything special, but, but because we do what we're supposed to do. We do as in we learn, right? We learn what we're investing in. We do by planning uh, because, you know, we understand what we're investing in. And then we execute accordingly to what we planned because that makes sense as an investor. How are you going to say, you know, I'm a full-time student, uh, I'm going to take five classes and then not show up to any classes, not take any of the exams and not, you know, do anything in that class and hope to be successful in that class. If you don't plan out, you know, if you, if you don't participate uh, to advance, right, then how are you going to be successful? I know this isn't the type of video uh, that I usually make for my helpful videos. I want to hear what you guys have to say um, about these certain videos. So go ahead and leave them in the comments. If you guys like this type of video of me actually planning out, because I do my live recaps, if you guys like these type of videos and would like me to make more of them, of me actually planning out my trades, um, I'd be more than happy to do it um, since I do it every single day, Monday through Friday, um, or actually Sunday through Thursday. Um, then I'd be more than happy to do this for you guys. Um, I just want to make sure that you guys uh, enjoy it. And the only way I can do that is if you guys you know, reach out to me within the Technical Solutions group chat, uh, give the video a thumbs up um, or leave it in the comments. And if you guys find it helpful or can, I can make it any more you know, personable to you guys that can you know, best fit your needs, then let me know. 
Um, so I'm going to start as answering some of your questions. So Ron Bates says, are you going to be doing any videos tomorrow? Yeah, I'll be doing my two videos that I do every single day still. Um, Antonio Magana says, hey, what's up, man? Um, so Raider Jake says, great timing. Just got off of work and ready for trading tomorrow. I love hearing that, you know, you know, working your job and then also being excited and motivated to do something on the side. I think that's one of my favorite things about day trading is that it allows me myself to have a normal job as well as, you know, because of the freedom that, you know, this allows you to, if you plan out accordingly, um, you only need one to two hours um, to actually trade, if not a couple minutes uh, to make a profit. But it really comes down to how much time you put into learning first to plan and then execute. So I'm really happy to hear that, Jake. So Jay says, I would really love to learn, but I have no idea where to start. So I have a series of helpful videos within my Tech Build Solutions YouTube channel, um, or this channel, I'm sorry. It's called Helpful Videos. Go ahead and click on that playlist. And then from that whole playlist, I mean, it answers a number of, uh, like, like uh, so many frequently asked questions. So I think that would be a great area um, for just great area or great content for you to learn from. Um, if not, Put your comment down below or feel free to join our group and post it um, and see what people would recommend. And I think that would be great exposure for you. Um, and that's Jay Anzuladua. I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name. I apologize. Uh, oh, uh, Jalen Silva says, Ricky, uh, Jay, start with Ricky's videos and paper trade to get your, free, your feet wet. So that's actually something that we recommend to do all the time. So great job there. Joey Rocket Film says, <clears throat> What's up, Ricky? It says Frank Cruz says, Ricky, you're the man. It's 11 p.m. and live video. I am in shock, but I love it. Thanks for your time. Of course. <laughs> I'm so happy to hear that. <clears throat> My throat is super dry. Victor Manuel asks, what program am I using? I'm using the TD Ameritrade Thinkorswim platform. If you go on my YouTube channel, and I'm sorry that I keep referring you guys to that, but it's where I have all my content. Um, I have a video showing you and providing you the link in the description on how you guys can download this Thinkorswim platform, both on your MacBook or your PC for free. Um, and I think it's going to be a great link for you. You do have to have a Thinkorswim uh, Think or Swim, uh, brokerage company. But as long as you're a United States, you know, citizen um, or have a social security number, then you should shouldn't have any issues downloading it for free, and you don't need to fund your account. So Snap losing twenty four percent of its stock price. What the heck? I did not know that. I wasn't following up. Whoa! Wow. SMA indicator is showing, wow, thank you for telling me that. And I did hear that within the, I, I'm sorry, I've been so out of the loop because I've been trying to, you know, um, and I didn't tell you guys this, but the reason I came to California was to surprise my mom for Mexican Mother's Day. If you guys don't know, um, I'm full Mexican, um, and I came to surprise her in California. My parents um, live in California, um, and my parents live together. My dad left to Mexico to visit my my grandma and then my mom me trying to surprise her was at the airport going to visit her parents in mexico so i ended up missing them so i'm the worst person to ever surprise anyone um and that's just my luck um uh, but luckily my girlfriend's here in california and her family so i was able to visit her and stuff and um i ended up going shopping for her um and for all my sisters and for my mom and for my girlfriend's mom and i bought them not too sure if you guys are going to be able to see um but I, I don't, I'm not, I'm not a huge spender. Um, and that's, you know, I, I, and I, I don't really usually talk about this, but I went to like micro cores, um, and I bought them like purses and like wallets and stuff like that. And I just thought it was something that I don't do very often. So I don't want to let you think that, you know, that you guys think that I have like a lot of money or anything like that. Um, I don't ever spend an enormous amount of money or anything like that, but today just, you know, their moms, um, and, um, I definitely didn't like appreciate my mom as much as I should have when I was younger. Um, but I definitely do right now. And I wanted to, you know, tell her thanks and stuff like that. But unfortunately she wasn't even here to, to 
accept it. But overall, let's go ahead and get back to it. So I did hear about Snap. So this is definitely one that has a huge gap or a margin for profit. And I'm going to share my screen so you guys can see this real quick. I'm so sorry for getting off topic. Um, but I think you guys are going to like seeing this. So it was trading. It was trading at $23.88. That's where that's the high that it hit today. Um, it closed at about $22, almost $23, and then saw this loss. I mean, I don't, I haven't seen Snapchat at $17 since its, you know, IPO launch. Really, when it when it was released. So let's say it just goes simply back up to where, you know, it was trading at. That's 25% potential for profit. So this is a huge gap, or this is definitely one that we're going to want to trade. I'm going to set my alerts once it goes below a certain point, uh, but you know, expect huge volume on this one just because um, I'm sure if it's in our radar, it's going to be in thousands, if not millions of people's radar um, to trade tomorrow for potential profit. So, wow, I'm super excited. So I'm just going to put this, and that's going to be my fifth one. So support, 17, resistance, 17, 80. Thank you again for that. You know, that's the whole point of this group. They, you know, that that's really just it. That's a perfect example of why Tech Book Solutions is so great because, you know, of this whole networking thing. Because I can, you know, I'm not going, I'm not going to be trading Snapchat based off of his opinion. He's like, he's just asking me what it is that I think he could have posted it. And because of that exposure, I can go ahead, based on my knowledge, perform my own technical analysis and, and judge it myself. Nothing to do with him. But judge it based on my own experience. That's where, what I'm going to invest my hard-earned money for um, in, in what I see potential in. Um, and, you know, 100%, thank you again for reminding me. And that's, <laughs> his name is the Marijuana Gamer Guy, so very unique name. Um, but again, it all comes down to the principle of networking um, and exposure. And I don't have to go based off anyone else's opinion, and you should never trade based on anyone else's opinion. But let exposure be something or a tool you use to be successful. There's nothing wrong with you know understanding and listening to ideas, but it comes you down to you as an investor to identify and plan out potential. Um, and you're the only one that's going to be making the judgment and investing your money. So make sure that you're the final decision on what you're choosing to invest in and not anyone else's. So thank you for that. Michael, you says good stuff. Appreciate it. Call PME at 288. Any thoughts on it? Um, I'm not going to perform any more technical analysis, but go ahead and uh, DM me within the Tech Solutions group chat, and I'll try to see if I can get back to you um, in time. So thoughts on MTBC on the offering news? Um, I'm guessing that's what led to that huge spike. Um, it looks like more of a pump and dump that someone probably um, overhyped it as well. This is why we don't chase stocks. Those that bought it at you know three dollars and eighty eight cents are now riding it all the way down. So. I hope the numbers within Tech Fund Solutions, uh, based on my previous videos on why you should always avoid hype, um, means that you know you should plan out your trades before you go in, even when you're doing momentum trading, and making sure that if you have a 2.5 you know percent stop loss, which is your max stop loss, always stick to it because if you didn't from three dollars and eighty eight cents now trading at two dollars, that's a loss that you don't want to experience. Frank Cruz says, "Thanks, Ricky." Appreciate it. So made 4K on Snap in one night. Glad to hear that. Thank you for your video uh, videos. That's by Bremen uh, Bremen Cook. Appreciate that. What are your thoughts when? <clears throat> so what are your thoughts? Uh, this is by Rob Parson. What are your thoughts on the PD2 rule when you're out of day trades? Um, you know, during, due to the PDT rule um, and you hold a stock overnight. I personally would not suggest to hold a penny stock overnight, but then you can get into string trading, which means you do hold for a longer term. Uh, but these are more with valuable companies. Um, so now planning out your trades, you know, looking and identifying potential, using the same skills that you do with day trading, but again, a little bit more long term. So instead of analyzing a stock between a one to two day period, now you're going to be analyzing a stock within you know one week to two weeks to months um, and identifying potential. And if all the indicators that you set up as you personally as an investor and they meet that criteria and you can plan out a trade that you know the potential for a profit is greater than potential for loss, then why not invest it or why not swing trade it? So. I think that's definitely a good idea, especially to make up, you know, extra profit and build your build yourself a bigger or larger cushion um, when when you're out of day trades. But again, stick to your max loss, and if you end up, you know, having to stop loss out or, you know, sell, understand that, you know, you have to stick to your plan and you have to cut your losses if you have to.
After the first few weeks, I'm just looking for the best strategies. That's by Pain Campaign it says, and then Ed Sands like, oh, he says, good stuff, bro. Uh, I go to Gilbert every weekend. We should network. You know, this is by Ed Sand. Um, direct message me within Tech Coach Solutions group chat, and hopefully we can meet up. And I definitely want to do these meet and greets. I met um, Mario, which is actually a member within our Tech Coach Solutions um, community. Um, or team, and it was amazing um, being able to just talk to him. Um, and he, I posted that I was at the Citadel, uh, Citadel Outlets, and he came out of his way because he lived nearby, um, stopped by, said what's up. I posted him. Uh, the link is in my description for this video, um, so you guys can follow me on Instagram. But I posted, you know, me and him taking a picture together uh, because I thought it was so amazing for an individual to go out of the way just to meet me. You know, I'm completely new to this this whole thing of, you know, having followers. Um, and really all I do is I talk about my trades and I try to help people as much as I can. Right. And it's definitely shown to have a positive impact in, you know, hundreds of people, uh, because of the feedback I receive and because of the effort that they go towards, um, in going out of their way. So I can't thank you, you know, Mario, 100%, like you're the man and I can't thank you enough. So Kamel says, you're an inspiration. Just wanted to say thank you. Appreciate that. And then Sahil says, yo, a simple pressure. Thank you so much for everything that you do. Can you make a video going into more detail and after about identifying support and resistance? I'm having trouble sometimes. I definitely can make a video and follow up with something about that. So, um, and that's by um, R. So remind me, um, feel free to continuously send me DMs uh, within the Tech Book Solutions or direct message me within the Tech Book Solutions group chat um, and continuously direct message me if I don't respond to you. I will eventually respond to you and I don't find that annoying. And you guys don't have to apologize for reaching out to me because um, I love talking to you guys. Sometimes I just get really caught up and really busy um, and in no way, unless I'm telling you to like, you know, stop messaging me, which I've never done before, um, you know, feel free to continue to reach out to me um, and ask and request videos because that's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you guys out any way that I can. So how much of your $1,000 do you invest in your Robinhood challenge when you make a trade? I've been having trouble getting fully um, filled. I've been, I've been getting partially filled in some of my trades, but I usually trade with the whole, you know, whatever the account is. Um, it's a little bit over $1,000 right now. So um, Junior Agayanas says, dude, you're the best. Appreciate that. So what is the alternative for Robinhood um, if it's not in my country? He's from Portugal. So that's by... Uh, the gaming parts, feel free to post that on the Facebook platform of Tech Club Solutions, um, and I'll go ahead and accept it so other people from Portugal uh, can offer suggestions because on the top of my head, I don't know of any. Earnings got destroyed. That's definitely been something that's been happening very often. It's been really good, really bad earnings. So, yep. So Jay and Anzaluda says, hey, Ricky, thanks for applying on Mexican too. while well, Hispanic. Um, and well, I'm sure to make um, greener shit. Says, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Team Hustle Gang. Wow. There's a lot of comments. There's a lot of messages. Uh, I'm so sorry, guys. But <laughs> DG says, hey, Ricky, the amount of value that you provide is awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, I am a complete noob of day trading. Can I learn the necessities from your channel? Are you going, um, or are there any other uh, recommended sources? So um, I'm going to end it with this. So of course, I want you guys to use my channel as a resource, right? It's why I create this content, and it's it's why I created this group. Um, I created this Tech Book Solutions community. Uh, for me to assist you guys, um, not only just, but to assist people um, in understanding and sharing best practices and mistakes and effort to promote growth. So that's the why the point is to this group. I understand that you're not gonna get every piece of information or everything that you need from my group, 
But what you can do is you can communicate with other members within our community and ask what they would recommend. Not just me, because I know I'm not going to have all the answers. And realistically, I'm, I'm a very practical and understanding person. Um, now, what I am trying to create within our technical solutions group chat um, or community is once we do launch this platform and give me feedback on this, um, feel free to direct message me if you guys have any real feedback. And I'm going to end this video like this is I'm trying to develop and build a team, not only for myself as being one of the group leaders um, as a technical trader, but gather you know top traders across the states and across the world and bring them on with technical solutions as in you know group mentors or group leaders and make sure that you know based on me not being the best momentum trader and being a better technical trader to get someone who can fill that spot as a technical trader that can be a group leader and to get someone that's a group leader in the swing trading you know type of market and then binary options forex whatever it is that i can provide that sense of you know proper mentorship uh, for someone that's successful in that field for everyone within technical solutions because all i want technical solutions to be is i don't want it to be a place like stock twits that is manipulative um, and that is really just you know one person trying to benefit from other uh, another person's loss the thing that i want technical solutions to be is that that breaking of this gray area this barrier that everyone perceives penny stocks to be because it's such an unknown like market and I think simply by breaking that, by being, you know, real with someone, by being, you know, as simple and, and, and just talking about the principles and, and removing all that BS is I, I think we will see a higher success rate rather than, you know, a 90 to 10 and, and move and transition and break that barrier and start seeing, you know, a 20 to 80, a 30 to 70, a 40 to 60. And, and you know, that's just my dream. But I definitely think by getting you know people who understand you know my whole goal is to provide a clear and simple platform for everyone and a supportive community. I think with those simple concepts and simple ideas, I can build a very powerful community and a very influential community that can really help and assist people. And that's really just it. I don't want people to be quitting their jobs, you know, all at the same time and then just doing this full time and not seeing themselves be successful. But I want them to understand realistically that there's nothing wrong with working, you know, your normal job. But instead of working, you know, 40 hours a week because of the amount of money that you make, you know, with day trading now you can work 30 hours a week and spend more time with your family or now that you know you make a good enough living with day trading um, you can use you know the extra money you make on your day job and invest that into investment properties you can start your own business you can start a career or something that you've always wanted to create um, and it's just because this extra source of income that you've been able to create yourself that now allows you to live this life um, and it doesn't have to be an enormous amount of money because I know money isn't a, you know, the only form of success. I see many people that are, you know, not rich by any means and they have an extremely successful life because they love their family and because they love who it is that they've become. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's a beautiful thing. So I just want to build a community of people that are supportive and help one another out. But I want the best people right in that market um, or the people that can properly you know execute and express our message with the right you know strategies and unfortunately i can't you know fit all those you know positions i can't fit forex i can't fix binary options because that quality won't be there it will slowly get diluted and i think by providing you know a more you know just professional and, and successful position to those that uh, can fill it would would be the 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 whole you know the big picture so <laughs> all right so um that is that is it so thank you guys again so much if you guys enjoyed this video feel free to give it a thumbs up um this video will be live within a couple minutes so you guys can rewatch what it is that you guys miss um and i can't I can't thank you guys enough for everything that it is that you guys do for me. And I want to make sure that you guys feel that I'm, you know, giving back as much as I can. And if I'm not, then, you know, let me know. Um, and I'll be sure to put in a little bit more effort. I have a flight to catch in about, what, six hours and 30 minutes. So I'm going to try to get some rest. 
Um, but like always, we will see you at Market Open. Um, the link is provided for you down below if you guys want to join Tech Solutions. And like always, let's make sure that we end the year on a, on a green note. Take care, guys.